Hi, this is Steve with electrothonparts.com, and today I'm going to see about putting a body on this crate kit car. Uh, this is my personal car, um, one of the very first ones made. And given all the flat sides and all that, it's going to be difficult to make this thing look very swoopy and aerodynamic. So I'm kind of em embracing the flat panels and going with more of a perhaps Cybertruck-inspired design. Um, you can see what I've done. I've added some uh, aluminum structure just to hold the, the panels. I'm going to be using Coroplast panels to cover this thing. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, I left a gap here uh, for access to where the batteries sit. So I'll have a little hatch that I can open up, pull the batteries out, swap them out as needed. Around the back, I've added more aluminum structure just for a, a tail. This is not going to be uh, structural, really, which that means if somebody rear-ends me, it is possible they can shovel this into the rear tire, and that's not great. So I'll have to be careful about not letting people run into me. Um, of course, I could have welded up some other structure. I could have had a, another bolt-on steel structure. Um, but I'm trying to keep this simple and just kind of straight bolt on um, with minimal minimal fabrication required in keeping with the whole idea of these cars, which is something that uh, any uh, school can do without access to specialized equipment, welders and the, and the like. Um, so it's just attached with uh, self-tapping screws and some rivets. All pretty basic stuff. I extended a, an additional dash panel up top since I had the the space to do it. So I've added a cycle analyst on my particular car just so I can kind of keep track of uh, of power usage and document and get some sort of baseline on how efficient these cars are, which is so far undetermined. But uh, yeah, this is not going to be so much a tutorial um just kind of an overview of of what you can do and how you can do it the uh, individual design of course is up to the teams as they want to approach it but uh yeah let's see what we can come up with so as you can see i've got the front axle off the crate as well as the front nose board the mirrors and even the switch here on the side. So I'm going to cut a piece of coroplast approximately the size of the entire side panel from the back all the way to the front. Cut a piece out, hold it up there, trace it more exactly, and then cut it to fit. It'll be held on with uh, a combination of zip ties and uh, duct tape. The zip ties, you, there's a means of uh, only going through one wall of the coroplast. If you get uh, zip ties that are small enough to fit inside the individual flutes, you can just cut one wall of the coroplast with some little holes and slide the zip tie around the side panel, uh, the side panel members through the hole then back to itself. So you don't actually have to penetrate the entire side of the coroplast and have zip ties showing from the outside. But uh, that's the next step. Now, as you can see, I have the Coroplast panel cut just to its uh, kind of highest dimension, which is about 18 inches all the way back here at the tail. You just have it clamped off just to hold it in place. And all I have to do now is just take a Sharpie. And trace along the whole thing so I know where to cut. Now, when it comes time to retain it, it helps if you do this. You mark where the crossbars are on both sides so you know where to cut the access holes in the inner wall 
for your zip ties. So just more of that. Here you can see the side panel and how I've attached it, or how I'm going to attach it. Um, I marked where the cross tubes are. You cut a three-sided hole in the same flute on each side of it, pass a zip tie through. Back here where it needs to bend to cut back for the tail box section, oh, and I also cut little pockets for the bolt heads to fit into, uh, you cut a 45 degree line one way, then another 45 degree the other way, and you peel it out, but then gives you a seam that will allow this to fold. But yeah, like that. And then tape along the edges. Uh, I said duct tape earlier. I think I'm probably going to use a reinforced foil tape. The problem with duct tape, it does work very well, but it does not hold paint very well. The paint will flake right off. Um, and the I have an aluminum foil tape that's reinforced with fiberglass something. Um, and it will take paint a lot better. So I will probably go with that. So it's been a couple of days of me working on this thing off and on. See, I got the uh, panels cut out and stuck on there. You can see there how I did the retaining. Notice that the zip ties do not come through the outer wall. You can see a little bit of a pucker right here. If you pull the zip ties too tight, you end up with a little bit of a pucker like that. You can leave it, or you can cut the zip tie, put a new one in, and not pull it quite as tight. I don't think I'm going to worry about it in this case. I retain these with Velcro. A little bit there, a little bit there. So I have access to the rear wheel. I added a handle so I have something to pick up on because this aluminum framework I put back here is not rugged enough to pick up the back of the car. So I added a handle there so I can flip this up and then grab the back end to pick it up. The sides also are held on with Velcro, both sides, so I can have plenty of access to service it. At that point right there, forward, it's uh, all zip ties. But back here, it's Velcro. Got a little bit of a gap there. I'm going to try to heat that up and bend it back. I think just the plastic's a little deformed. Up front, same kind of story. Here's my battery access hatch. Velcro there. And there. So I can access my batteries. Like that. Just a little nugget of information for you. If you put... Um, Magnets, if you glue magnets to the frame, you can stick your uh, shoulder harness latches onto it and uh, makes it a lot easier for the driver to find them once they get in the car so they can buckle themselves in. Uh, prior to my doing this, frequently I had to be buckled into my car like a toddler. I could get out on my own, fine, but I couldn't ever seem to find the straps to buckle myself in. So, that helps. So, next is the nose. So here's the beginning of the nose section. Uh, three layers of two inch thick styrofoam insulation, Gorilla glued to the wooden nose board. I kind of sketched what I'm thinking about doing for the side profile. Um, I didn't get the board or the, the styrofoam centered very well on the board. So we're not off to a great start and it's already glued down. So, you know, do better than I did. Here you can see the almost finished product. I uh, went with a kind of a simple look because there's so many flat sides on this thing. 
and uh, I didn't do a great job of shaping it. You can see I kind of cut a little too deep right there. I'm going to cover it, I think, with a lightweight wall spackle that uh, something I can use to fill the little imperfections and sand it down and um, then paint because if you try to paint it right now aerosol spray paint will dissolve this uh, styrofoam so you have to coat it with something and um, you could do fiberglass but I don't know how to do fiberglass and the whole idea behind this nose for me is that it will be kind of a sacrificial piece you know you have a few inches of styrofoam to help absorb impact if you do hit something and if you destroy the nose so what it only took you know a few hours to make and uh, better to destroy a, a piece of styrofoam than, you know, bend the chassis or hurt yourself or hurt whoever or whatever it is you just hit. Um, ideally, don't hit anything. But yeah, so that's the, that's the shape. So, overall, it's not, a, it's not a beautiful car. But, you know, it looks better than it did all exposed anyway. On to the next step. So here we have the finished product. Full paint, stickers, all that. Turned out okay. The nose, well, not great. It's like a 50 footer. It's going to look fine 50 feet away. But up close, not so much. I did not go with wall spackle like I was thinking. Somehow I got it in my head that if I bumped anything, that, that stuff would just flake right off. I don't know whether that's true or not, but that's what I had in my head. So I had the bright idea to use Flex Seal in the can, not the aerosol, but in the can, and brush it on. Well, that didn't work great. I mean, it did, it did coat it, but it didn't fill imperfections at all. And, of course, I had a lot of imperfections. I didn't sand it down very good. I don't think I have the patience for, to do decent body work. But anyway, on the whole, I mean, it's not bad for what it is. Um, there's my batteries. So I've got decent access. Of course, I've got access back here. To work on the rear wheel and chain and all that so that's nice but uh, again this was just kind of a an overview to give you an idea of what you can do how you can approach putting a body on one of these things this was fairly simple um, I worried more about the stickers and the paint and stuff than of course anyone has to um, the foil tape still didn't hold paint as well as I thought it would of course, I didn't prime it. Um, I just shot the, the paint directly onto it because I didn't prime the plastic either. Um, duct tape does work really well. And in, since it's available in a lot of different colors, if you can find a color that you like, that works with the color scheme you're going for overall, you might be better off to paint all your panels beforehand and use the colored duct tape that you like and just embrace the color, just go with it. Or match your paint to the color of the duct tape, if you can do that. Um, because as the duct tape flexes, it will shed the paint otherwise. But, you know. But anyway, I realized this was a series of short, horribly shot videos. Um, but I don't have time or patience to do any better than that right now. So as other people come up with um, bodies for their crate kit cars, uh, by all means, you know, share videos or photo or whatever of it so people uh other people can have an idea of what you did and how how they can approach theirs thank you